We have come to expect too little from our leaders. That has to change. We've identified key obligations that are critical for redefining leadership for the future. Are you really ready to take on the leadership role? What is leadership? And is it worth dying for? These are two questions I had to ask myself very early in my career after a colleague of mine, a mentor, if you say, died of cancer. A disease that she believed she got from working in a horrible workplace most of her career. We worked for a large public sector organization. She was a senior manager. I was a newbie right out of school. Remember that feeling when you got out of school and it was your first job? That excitement, you felt you could change the world. Does anyone remember that feeling? That's what I had. And I walked into this organization and just in the first few days I began to look around and the walls were beige. The desks were beige, the floors were beige, the chairs were beige, and I would soon find out that the people were beige. They were half decent people, but they would show up every day just going through the motions, just showing up at 8.30 and leaving at 4.30. And I already started to feel this niggly in my gut that said, I'm not sure this is the place for me. Well, as weeks went on, it became clear that my concerns were real. There was really nothing in that work environment that was creating a lot of inspiration for me. Decent people, decent managers, but everyone just showed up and went through the motions. Then one day, a colleague of mine, a senior manager named Zinta, came up to me and said, Vince, I'm trying to set up some committees to make this workplace a better place. Are you interested in helping me out? Before she could even say those words, I said, I'm in. Whatever you need me to do, I will be there. And so the committee started. And we started to implement a whole number of initiatives, all focused on trying to make this work environment much better. Much to my surprise, what I began to find was it started to actually have an impact. But when you look at leadership today, you really have to start asking yourself some questions. Because when you look at what's happening, the corporate scandals, the lack of confidence that employees have in, in senior management, companies that we can't seem to figure out how to grow, you really have to ask yourself and really come to the conclusion that leadership is broken. And we've got to figure out how to fix it. To me, the real tragedy of all of this is that somehow along the way, we have just come to settle. We have lived in these organizations and we've come to expect so little from our leaders and from ourselves as leaders. And that is something we have to change. We, you get confronted with new opportunities and every time you have to ask yourself, am I up for this opportunity? Do I feel I can actually be a leader that's going to add value? Because ultimately to me, that decision is fundamental about what leadership is. To me, leadership is essentially an individual who looks around and says, you know what, I have to step up in this situation. I have to now step out of my comfort zone and try to make the world a better place. And that world can be your team, it could be your department, it could be your organization, it could be the community in which you live, it could be your kid's soccer team. Whatever it is, in the end, it's about a decision you make and leaders have to make it. They have to be conscious that they are truly deciding to be a leader. What if you, at an individual level, aspire to be the best leader you could be? Ultimately, leadership is a decision, and we have to choose to lead. Be the leader that everyone else wants to emulate. In August 2011, Hurricane Irene hit the East Coast, creating quite a bit of damage. A couple of days later, I was on a flight back to Toronto, and I was sitting in my seat, and I noticed eight young gentlemen came in. They were loud, they were boisterous, they were kidding one another. And as they sat around me, I just sort of said, what are you guys up to? They told me that they were on a mission. They worked for a utility contract company and they were on a mission to go to Toronto, pick up a fleet of trucks, then drive to Connecticut and repair all the power lines that had come down. They had an important task ahead of them. As my flight continued, I just couldn't help but observe how they interacted with one another. They were always joking, they were kind of making fun of each other, but I could just feel they had this connection, this bond. 
So I asked them, you guys seem really tight. Why is that? Well, one of them turned to me and said, you know, when you do the kind of work we do, when you're up there installing or repairing power lines, you know that the slightest mistake and you can lose someone forever. And so we're like a band of brothers. We, we, we know we have each other's backs and that's the difference. And that to me was a really important insight. I was thinking about us as leaders and organizations. How many of us can say that we've got that same kind of feeling with our fellow leaders? Do we have this bond, this connection? Do we feel that we've got each other's backs? For most of the clients that I work with, their answer is no. And I believe that's the opportunity that organizations have to build a strong community of leaders in their organizations where there is this very clear bond, that connection among your leaders. How do you do it? Four steps. First, you need to aspire to great leadership. What if your company built the best leadership in your industry? That would be a game changer. Two, you need to develop what I call your own leadership contract. It identifies what are your expectations of your leaders so that they're clearly aware of where they need to commit to, how they need to step up every day, and how they need to work together. Number three, you need to help develop your leaders. They can't do it on their own, but more importantly, you need to do the difficult work of weeding out the leaders who aren't aligned, who aren't committed to being the best possible leaders they can be. And four, you have to uh, provide opportunities for your leaders to connect because you can't build a community of leaders uh, among a group of strangers. Uh, in my experience, I find when organizations get this right, they build this ultimate differentiator, something that really distinguishes them from their competitors, and it becomes a sustainable way to grow their business. What's going to differentiate your organization? It's going to be the quality of the leadership culture. We need strong leadership throughout our organizations because relationships is how work gets done today. What if your company built the best leadership in your industry? That would be a game changer.